Hi, welcome to the Sonny Hirsch Election Special. This is a series of five or six shows we'll be doing to highlight candidates across the board running in various races. Um, a lot of times we've done, th we do have a regular show also, the Northtown News Magazine, but there have been so many requests. We just ran out of space on the Northtown News Magazine and want to make sure we bring a product to you. And Sonny, who is the chairman of the District Advisory Committee of the 24th District, very big on court advocacy, and, and he's got more titles than I care to mention. Um, you know, we both thought it was important enough to highlight different people. We actually are interviewing 14 people today. 12 of them were judges, and we're very picky about who we take when it comes, well, judges will take a lot of qualified people. We're more picky about regular politicians. And there are only two non-political people that we're having among our 14 guests today. And it is a pleasure to introduce you to, and those of you who are familiar with the regular show know that one of our favorite all-time people is Terry O'Brien, who's president of the Water Reclamation District and a commissioner for 24 years. Or 23, will be 24 by the time he's through. And he spoke very, very highly of two people. I'm not going to tell you who the second one is, but we're, we have one of them right here with us. Maybe read Jewish Chicago, pick it up, it's free. Um, you'll, you'll, maybe you'll be able to figure out from there. But we're talking about, um, and I'm going to let him tell you about himself. It's the first time he's on the show. Patrick Daly Thompson, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for having me. First of all, thank you. And um, so you're, tell us about yourself. Okay, a little bit... Uh, about myself personally, uh, my wife and I have three children. I have a uh, freshman in high school, a fifth grade daughter, and a, uh, my son is in kindergarten. So we have uh, some young kids. Uh, I'm an attorney by trade, and um, my practice is primarily real estate and uh, public finance, are the two areas um, that I'm involved with. Um, I'm running for water reclamation district um, in 2005, I was appointed uh, by the mayor to the Bubbly Creek Committee. And I oh. live in Bridgeport on the south side, and, and there's a finger of the south branch of the uh, Chicago River called Bubbly Creek. It's uh, somewhat of a, a famous creek. If Very you famous. <laughs> and uh, so that particular uh, finger of the south branch of the river uh, is one of the more polluted uh, waterways uh, in, I think, America. And so in 05, I was on this uh, committee that was a joint effort between the uh, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, the City of Chicago, the Department of Planning, and then community activists like myself. And we were trying to, to come up with ways to, to clean the, the water from an environmental standpoint, and then also the banks of the uh, Bubbly Creek and the whole corridor uh, that runs out into the south branch of the Chicago River to try to create some economic development. And it was really uh, uh, an interesting and, and uh, great experience to get involved in, and that really got me more interested and involved with what the MWRD is doing. Yeah, for those people who aren't familiar, if I'm correct, the bubbles came from all the carcasses from the stockyards that were uh, right. tossed in the Chicago River and they actually still, like 100 years later, are bubbling yeah. away. <laughs> well, that's, that's it, they were, uh, as they were, uh, thrown in the waste from the Union Stockyards. Uh, Bubbly Creek used to run a little bit further south, the Union Stockyards. Um, and uh, from 39th Street south to the Stockyards, they've since filled that portion of the Bubbly Creek in. But at 39th and Racine, there's a uh, pumping station that the MWRD has. Uh, and that helps pump the, uh, the, the sewer water out to the sanitary um, uh, pumping station or out to rather the Stickney filtration plant. And um, in today, 2012, when, when we have heavy rains, they actually open up that pumping station, they have to open up the sewer. So unfortunately we have raw sewage that still comes into Bubbly Creek and still pollutes uh, that end of the south branch of the Chicago River, so. No, but you know, in the meantime, by the way, our most watched show of all time on, on the regular show, is the deep tunnel. We've got 99,000 watches and it's an yeah. amazing place, just yeah. an amazing place. Yeah. Well, the deep tunnel, uh, I'm sure Terry has been on the show and explained, you know, that it was the tarp, so it was the tunnel and reservoir project. The deep tunnel piece is completed, but, um, you know, we've experienced historic uh, flooding in the last few years from the south suburbs to the north suburbs and throughout the south side. Um, 
you know, to get the, the reservoirs online, the Thornton Reservoir and then the McCook, which is out west, um, you know, that'll help mitigate and alleviate some of that flooding. And that's, uh, right now they're, they're delayed in uh, coming online until 2029 for McCook. And I think that's far too long. I think we need to look at um, trying to get those reservoirs online sooner. And if not, some alternatives so we can alleviate some of the flooding. No, it'd be nice. We've been down at the Thornton Reservoir, and uh, we actually saw how it was being done and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, they, they, they've, uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to help them uh, find the funds and the ideas to, uh, Absolutely. you know, to be able to speed those things up. Because mm -hmm. it really, I remember how much flooding there used to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a lot better than it was. But, it, yeah, you know what, with, with these every hundred year rains coming twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They're not every hundred years anymore. And I think we just have the, the change of weather patterns that we've experienced and I think you know that's one uh, piece of what the district does is storm control and they've had control since 2005 um, to to manage the uh, the stormwater and then the other piece is uh, the water quality that we're all concerned about and making sure that um, you know if you're using the the rivers uh, that that they're clean to a level that you're not going to get sick if you're canoeing or kayaking and you, you accidentally fall in or get splashed. We need to make sure that those water courses are, are clean to a, a level that, uh, again, that they're safe for us to enjoy. I also think that you know, with that, um, there's some, some newer creative uh, ideas that we have to explore that other parts of the country are already doing in terms of the conservation, which we do have the luxury, 20% of the world's surface water is in the Great Lakes water basin. So yeah, people we have, don't realize that we've got 20% of the, the drinkable drinking water right here. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, water, you know, I, I think water will be uh, to the next century what oil was to the last because there's droughts. We're seeing it worldwide. But domestically here, we saw what happened down in Texas, which they're still experiencing the droughts from last year. Um, you know, out west in California, in California, and Nevada, Arizona. I mean, they're much more conscious and uh, and creative in terms of their conservation. They're they're capturing the rainwater. We do have these historic rains that we've experienced, but what we're doing with that water, that rainwater, is we're, we're processing it and sending it down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. When we should be trying to capture that and use that uh, rainwater or the process water, which is called, oftentimes referred to as gray water. Um, manufacturing, for example, uses a tremendous amount of water. It doesn't necessarily have to be the drinkable water that we get out of our tap, yeah. but um, we can, I think, be more creative with trying to utilize some of that water with manufacturing. That sounds really good, very good, as a matter of fact. Um, first of all, I want to point out uh, that in, in Jewish Chicago, as well as myself, I, I don't get into endorsing judicial people on the air, but not just Ontario Brian say so, but what everybody else tells me, I do want to say that you are one of two people running for for commissioner of the Water Rec that is endorsed in Jewish Chicago, and I'm also personally telling everybody that I'm endorsing you and voting for you, and I urge everybody to vote for you on March 20th or from February 7th to March 20th. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, my pleasure, and uh, I'm very picky about these things, so you mm -hmm. should know. Uh, but you know what? I'm sure that you're you're at, so you're at, probably out. It's not quite the whole county, and I think it's a little over what the county sure. is. Sure. But you're out campaigning all the time, I imagine. A absolutely. Um, every uh, every morning we start out, and uh, every evening, um, and and in between there, uh, as I mentioned, I, I'm an attorney. I, I try to stop in the office, and uh, I have great partners and colleagues that are helping me manage my caseload, but um, it is, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a, to, to uh, meet the people throughout the county has been just a, uh, a pleasure, and I, I'm enjoying it. And I Terrific. Think, uh, and if people want to contact you or your website? Sure. It's uh, patrickdthompson.com, and uh, my punch number is 74. So as you go to vote with the early voting, and uh, on March 20th, I ask you to please uh, remember Patrick Daly Thompson. Uh, punch number 74. Want well, to wish you a lot of luck in the election. I'll be punching 74 myself. Thank you. And thank you and on to segment two.